Hey everyone, I'm Claire from the Kitschy Kitchen and today on the Design Network, I'm gonna show you how to put together the perfect cheese board that tastes delicious and looks so chic. And the key to putting together the perfect cheese board is know your guests, know if they're adventurous or if they're kind of basic and they don't wanna try anything too scary and pungent. And then when you put together a cheese board, you wanna just make sure you sort of stick with a general theme and that you cover the textures and flavors that really sort of make the cheese board absolutely out of this world. I usually go with three to five. I usually pick an odd number. There's something just really pleasing to the eye about that. It's not too symmetrical. So today I picked five cheeses from my local cheese store and I chose all cow's milk cheese because I thought it would be really fun for guests to sort of explore all cheese in sort of one format. But you can play around with it. Doing cheese from one country is also really fun. Doing cheese from one area or one type of cheese is really cool too. But I've covered basically every sort of flavor and texture you could imagine. I have a hard cheese, I have two semi-firm cheeses, and then I have one kind of gooey and one very gooey cheese. The next thing is kind of organizing the cheese board. I like using a board that is super big because then I have space to sort of spread everything out. It's not over crowded. The next thing I'm going to add to my board is fruit. Basically the acid and sugar in fruit is just sort of a natural pairing with cheese. It's fantastic. So today I'm going to add some roasted grapes. I just love the idea of doing roasted fruit. To me it's really sexy and fun. It also brings out a lot of amazing caramel notes. And so to roast grapes, I just sprinkled them with some sea salt and olive oil and roasted them at 450 for about 30 minutes until they just were golden brown and really delicious. And I love the idea of keeping it on the vine because it just looks really dramatic and pretty and then people can pluck individual roasted grapes off and enjoy them. So the fruit brings the sweet, but you need to have something that kind of is the opposite of that. So I like adding a briny element. So for me today, I'm gonna add olives, but you could also add cornichon, you could add large capers, basically anything with a little bit of that vinegar kick. It just is really great at balancing out the fat and salt. Next is a preserve. So I'm actually kind of cheating today. I'm gonna do a membrillo, which is a uh, kins paste, so it definitely is a jam. But I also like adding honey, which while not a preserve, has that same kind of characteristic. Next, I'm going to add meat. And cured meat and cheese is just such a natural pairing. They're wonderful together. Two cured meats that basically go with any cheese are prosciutto and finocchione. Prosciutto has just a really lovely, simple, sort of slightly sweet, slightly musty, salty flavor. And finocchione is basically salami that's been spiked with fennel seeds and it just goes wonderfully with cheese, but it also doesn't overpower the cheese or compete with it. And here's the thing, I can feel that this board is already getting very crowded, so I'm gonna save some of the meat for later. You can always replenish. One thing I'm missing here is crunch, and nuts add a really wonderful crunch to a cheese board. So you can use any nut you like. I personally really like walnuts. I think they have just such a lovely sort of warm round flavor, so I'm definitely adding some of those. And I'm now going to add some freshly cut baguette, and then you also need to have knives for your cheese. It's actually really important that you have the right cheese knife with the right cheese, because there's nothing worse than having a hard cheese and a blunt knife and not being able to cut through it properly, so you wanna make sure you align everything with the proper tool. For your smelly cheese, I really like adding a glass cloche on top, but it sort of immediately makes it look A, super fancy, and B, it actually does kind of protect it from having this really pungent smell. A lot of times people can get turned off by sort of a smelly cheese because they think it actually is gonna have a really strong flavor. That's usually not the case. A lot of times the smelliest cheeses actually have a really delicate sort of fruity flavor that's really lovely. So I like putting a cloche on top because it looks awesome and it kind of make sure that your cheese board doesn't feel overwhelming. And that's it. So my board is assembled and you can see it took up the entire space. It's not overcrowded. And a special note here is that you wanna make sure your cheese is not fridge cold. If it's super cold, you really are missing out on a lot of the flavor and texture. So I like to take the cheese out about 15 minutes before serving. It still should be cool to the touch. If you ever see it getting shiny, that means that the oils are coming out, so it's actually getting too warm. So it should be cool to the touch, but not ice cold, because then you just sort of miss out on that really luxurious, awesome texture and beautiful flavor. Well, I hope you enjoyed learning a little bit about how to put together the perfect cheese board, and thanks for watching my show on the Design Network.